It is literally this small and weighs four pounds. Super tiny, but it's a super capable little telescope. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're checking out the Celestron First Scope 76. This little telescope was introduced back in 2009 for the International Year of Astronomy by Celestron. And since then they have sold a boatload of these and with different variants out on the market. You can get the original one, which has all of the astronomers' names painted on the tube. You can get this one that we're looking at specifically today, which is the National Park Foundation. There was one called the Cometron, and I know there's a few others out there that have been released at some point through the timeline. These little guys are perfect for kids and for outreach because they're so lightweight and portable, but they still are powerful enough to show you the craters on the moon and a few of the bright solar system and deep sky objects. The eyepieces that are included with this little guy are a 20 millimeter and a 10 millimeter eyepiece. The 20 millimeter eyepiece gives you 15 times magnification and then 10 millimeter gives you 30 times magnification respectively. Now this little telescope is by no means a huge professional grade telescope and you shouldn't go into it with that sort of a mindset with one of these. These are really one of the most inexpensive telescopes that you can buy at simply 80 bucks. So they're very cheap, but actually for what you get for the money, they're actually not really half bad. This telescope features a 76 millimeter objective. So the mirror at the back here is 76 millimeters, which is exactly a three inch aperture. The light comes straight in the tube here and bounces off that mirror at the bottom and comes to this 90 degree angle secondary mirror to reflect it into your eyepiece right here. This little guy though is collimatable. You can adjust the secondary mirror only on this. So if you have a laser collimator or something, you can do some collimation, but you can't really get it perfect. This does have a spherical primary mirror, which is different from the parabolic mirrors that are normally in Newtonian reflectors. And basically the difference is, is that spherical mirrors are easier to make, they're cheaper to make because they don't require as much precision. The big disadvantage to this is that only the very center is going to be nice and clear. So you will have really fuzzy images towards the edges of a spherical mirror like this. The back of the mirror though is glued in place. There are no collimation adjustments on the back of this like there are normal Newtonian reflectors. So that is the biggest downfall is that this is not fully adjustable. So if it comes misaligned from the factory and you don't know how to do it, you'll either have to send it back or attempt to get a laser collimator or something to attempt to collimate it the best you can from home. Now this little telescope is really lightweight and portable. It's only four pounds. You can basically take it anywhere you want, whether that be camping, if you want to just pop out and look at the moon one night, or if you get a solar filter, you can even look at the sun and see the sunspots with one of these little guys. This telescope was made for kids in mind, as you can take this little guy out and show them the craters of the moon in almost no time. And believe me, it does deliver a really nice view of the full moon. Now, when you're looking for other things like Jupiter, let's say, you will see the four Galilean moons with this, but don't expect to see high resolution details of the Great Red Spot or a lot of the cloud details because it simply doesn't have that much magnification in this small little optical tube. Same thing goes with Saturn. Saturn's even further out there than Jupiter. Saturn, you can barely make out that it has rings because it just simply doesn't have the focal length desired to get nice and close, even with some higher power eyepieces, this telescope just doesn't have that sort of resolution for that. This telescope is big enough though to see things like the Orion Nebula and to view things like the Beehive Cluster and the Pleiades Clusters. If you wanted to get into more high resolution observations, this is not going to deliver that for you. Now to use this little telescope, it is super, super simple. All you're gonna do is remove the dust cap from the front here. You take that off, you swing your telescope around where you want it to be, you unlock this little knob here that allows you to move the tube up and down, and when you find the target that you're looking for, all you simply do is tighten the knob just a little bit so you can still follow it across the sky because this is obviously not a tracking device, but it allows you to move the telescope with it 
And then once you're on your target, you will simply take your focuser here and you'll just dial your focus in and out to make sure you have the clearest image possible. If you're interested in picking up one of these, you can order them directly from Celestron or you can get them at a variety of different retailers out there, including your local bookstore. I know Barnes & Noble here in the United States sells these right off the shelf in most of their stores. So you can easily get your hands on a really nice beginner friendly telescope out there. If you just wanna go out and look at the moon's craters and bop around the night sky and find some stars and just kind of let your imagination explore a little bit or even grab yourself a solar filter and look at sunspots with this, this is going to be a perfect telescope without breaking your bank. As always, thank you so much for joining. I'll see you next time, clear skies.